Well, g'day, Curd Nerds. Today, we're going to be making Red Windsor. So Red Windsor is a style of cheese. It's not um, DOP or AOC cheese. It's from the United Kingdom. I just happen to have one right here. There it is, in all its glory. It's certainly red or dark maroon or maroon, whatever you want to call it. It is made using the farmhouse cheddar recipe that I have, and I soaked all the curds in the star of the show, which is port from Portugal. So port is a fortified wine. It means it's had brandy added to it. So this is vintage port. Uh, it, it has been aged in oak barrels. It's very dark. It's a little bit sweet, um, but it goes down a treat when added to Red Windsor cheese. So I added the entire bottle. This was not cheap. Port is not cheap, especially from Portugal here in Australia anyway. So let me show you how I made Red Windsor style cheese. So start off by sanitizing all of your equipment. You can see I boiled my stainless steel equipment plus my cheesecloth and I'm just laying them on a clean tea towel now. There we go. There's all the equipment ready, including the calcium chloride, the rennet and uh, all the ingredients measured out. You can also see a bottle of port. We'll get to that in a second. Here is my sink area, all sanitized with white vinegar after I cleaned it. And there is my compound lever press and the louder mold that I'm using today for this cheese. There's the star of the show, as I mentioned a second ago. It is vintage port. Look at the color of that as it pours out. So it's a nice deep ruby red color. And yes, I did have a tipple. It was very, very nice. So it's about 20% alcohol. And uh, yeah, the quantity is 750 milliliters. So Red Windsor ingredients, 10 liters or 10.6 quarts of whole cow's milk, a quarter of a teaspoon of MA4001 by Denisco, choose it, or Kazoo, uh, mesophilic starter culture, they're roughly the same. Half a teaspoon or 2.5 milliliters of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non chlorinated water. Half a teaspoon or 2.5 milliliters of single strength liquid rennet. I'm using IMCU 200 strength. And that's diluted in quarter of a cup of non chlorinated water. You'll need 750 milliliters or 25 fluid ounces of vintage port two tablespoons of non-iodized salt and cheese wax or vacuum packing equipment. So heat your milk up to 31 degrees Celsius or 88 Fahrenheit. Clip on your thermometer and away we go. So I've just transferred that over to the water bath that I've got set at the right temperature. It is 31 point, ooh, zero. That's spot on. Well done, Gav. So that'll keep it warm during the entire cheese making process. So we're going to add the starter culture now. As I mentioned, I'm using MA4001. There's a quarter teaspoon and we'll sprinkle that over the top of the milk. So cover that up and allow it to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later, I'm going to give it a quick stir, stir the culture into the milk. So it's all the way through. Now pop the lid back on top and we're going to allow it to ripen or acidify for 40 minutes. So 40 minutes later, the pH has dropped down due to the lactic bacteria converting the lactose 
interlactic acid. So give it a quick stir. Check the temperature once again. It's at uh, 31.3, which is okay. It's crept up a little bit, but it shouldn't creep up much more than that. Now we're going to add in the calcium chloride. So while stirring, just tip that in. And give that a stir. So it's mixed through thoroughly. And now we're going to add the rennet. Just pour that in whilst we're stirring. And stir for no more than one minute. So pop the lid back on and allow the milk to set for 40 minutes. So 40 minutes later, we're going to check for a clean break. You just put your curd knife into the curds at a 45 degree angle, then turn it and lift it up. And if it's sloppy, it's not quite ready. If there's a clean defined line, you're ready to go. We're going to cut the curds into 1.25 centimeter or half inch cubes horizontally with my stainless steel curd harp. The link is in the description below. And I'm using my curd knife to cut the vertical cuts, trying to be as accurate as I can, but the curd keeps moving. So it makes it a little bit difficult sometimes. Just do the best you possibly can. Okay, pop the lid back on and allow the curds to heal for five minutes. This stops them from fracturing when you stir them. So with your spoon, just gently stir them and break apart any really large pieces with the side of the spoon. go looking lovely so just check the temperature that's uh, 31.2 spot on now we're going to increase the temperature you can see that I'm doing that on the precision cooker up to 39 degrees Celsius or 102 degrees Fahrenheit and we'll do this over the period of 45 minutes so it'll slowly heat up uh, the curds and whey there uh, up to that target of 39 Fahrenheit. Uh, sorry, 39 Celsius. So we're stirring, stirring, stirring. There we go. So after the uh, time has elapsed, just check the temperature. And it's 38.9 or 39, close enough. Celsius that is. So a fair bit of whey has been expelled out of the curds as you can see there. And that's the size, about the size of uh, baked beans. Very nice. Just remove your spoon and just cover that up. We're going to allow it to acidify further for 40 minutes and it will settle down to the bottom as well which will assist with the next part so after the 40 minutes we're going to get a stainless steel sieve and a stainless steel ladle and we're going to dip off the way to the level of the curds now i reserved it to make some ricotta i only didn't get very much probably about 100 grams but uh, i that's what i used the whey for in this case so we're just dipping that off, putting it into a clean pot so I can use it later. Now there will be a video out soon called 14 ways with whey, maybe 15, we'll see. Uh, but I've done the research and I will be filming that very soon. So don't throw your whey away, away. Okay, so that's all done now and we've got it floating in the pot in the water bath so I'm letting a little bit of the water out there as you can see to stop it from floating now we are going to stir the curds now for another 20 minutes this just helps them shrink and a little bit more whey expelled 
and breaks up any clumps that are in there. So 20 minutes later, we're going to line our colander with a sanitized um, loose weave cheesecloth. And you can see the size, it's shrunk a bit. It's a little bit less than a baked bean, probably size of a plump pea. I just stopped the sous vide or the precision cookers that were screaming at me. Now, drain the curds through the cheesecloth lined colander. Make sure you get them all in there. Don't want to waste any. There we go. I must have spilled some curds because there's a white dog down on the ground eating my curds. Anyway, put the pot back into the sink. Now, I've just removed the plug, let the water out. It stops the pot from floating around. Pop the plug back in again, and we're going to put some warm water in the sink. So the water can be between, be between 35 Celsius and about 39. But before then, we're going to break up the curds into smaller pieces just so it doesn't mat together. This helps with the marbling effect. Now gather up the bag and we're going to pop them into the pot. Just a little bit of a light squeeze there. Let's get rid of some more whey. Transfer them into the pot. Just pull up one side and they all fall out. Here we go. Now keep the cloth, we're going to need it later. Let's break up uh, the curds into small pieces again. They tend to mat together. I've turned on the precision cooker again and uh, hopefully get that temperature back up to 39 Celsius. So we're going to add the room temperature vintage pour into the curds uh, so they uh, just cover the curds. What a lovely looking colour. Okay, so it was about three quarters of the bottle so far. Just give them a bit of a stir just so they're uh, not matting together and they're broken up a little bit. So not quite covered so pour the rest in and give it a good stir and I'm just patting it down very gently there so uh, they are underneath the port so you can pop the lid on now and we're going to just quickly check the temperature it's about 33 degrees Celsius so it will increase as the precision cooker heats up the water bath that the pot's floating in. Don't get the water in the pot, whatever you do. So allow the curds to soak in the port for one hour. And make sure they're covered. So an hour later, I just did a little bit of a test. I grabbed a piece of curds and uh, ripped it in half. I want to see how deep into the rind of the curd the port had penetrated I don't think it was uh, quite right. Let's have a look close up there. Not red enough. It's Red Windsor after all. So yeah, it needed to be redder. So stir that again, just to make sure that any of the white floaty bits are now submerged again. We want deep penetration of the port into the curds for the effect. So we're gonna allow it to soak for another hour uh, at 29 degrees, sorry, 39 degrees Celsius. Just staying warm there. Rightio, I reckon. Let's have a look. It's perfect. So about halfway through each of the little pieces of curd, the colour had seeped in the port. So we're going to remove the uh, precision cooker now. Get that out of the way. Don't need that anymore. 
pull the water, pull the plug out of the sink, all the water goes down the drain. Remove the trivet and put the cheesecloth lined colander on the other side of the sink. There we go. So drain the curds uh, through the cheesecloth. Oh, all that port went down the sink. Couldn't drink it. It was all covered in whey. It was very cloudy stuff. Anyway, we're going to return the curds back into the pot for the next essential step. So get them all out there. So we're going to add the salt now to the curd. So two tablespoons, which is about uh, 15 to 20 grams, depending on the coarseness of the salt you're using. So we're going to stir that well. So you want 2% salt per weight, by weight. So just stir that through or mill it, as it's known. Quick wash of the hands. So if you're using a normal basket, line it with a cheesecloth, but I'm using the louder mold and you don't need to, it doesn't need a cheesecloth. I'm going to fill the basket with the curds. Looking lovely. Best looking curds I've seen for ages. If you're into that kind of thing, which we all are. <laughs> We wouldn't be here otherwise, would we? All right. So now that they're all in and all the little pieces of curd are off the side of the mold, we're going to top that with a follower. Just gently. And get the press ready. So we're going to pop the basket into the press. Now this is a... Uh, a lever, dual lever action press, so it doesn't need very much weight to get the right pressure. So we're going to add the weight on, and we're going to apply 10 kilograms or 22 pounds of pressure for one hour. And you can see the port leaking out there. Oh my goodness, it's gone down the sink again. Now it looks a little bit wonky, but I'll fix that in a minute. Just make sure it's level when you're pressing. Okay, so you can see that the port and whey uh, is gently seeping out of the mold of the basket. Okay, so we're going to remove the cheese from the basket if you're using a normal mold. Now, with this mold, you don't have to. Uh, it's designed in such a way that you don't need to flip the cheese at all. Now you can turn the cheese and redress it if using a normal basket, but I'm just filling up my uh, weight there, my pot to the right weight for the next uh, pressing. So I'm just taking the lid off just to have a quick look at it. And you can see there, quick close up, and it's starting to form up very well. Now I don't dare take it out at this stage, probably all fall apart. But uh, we're going to press it longer. So uh, we're going to apply 22.5 kilograms or 50 pounds of pressure for 12 hours. Okay, just checking that's level, make sure that's all level, and it is, which is good. This mold tends to level by itself, which is good. So removing the weight, removing the cheese, and getting rid of the press, all done with that. Just clean, quick clean there, as you do. Now we're gonna remove the cheese from the basket. It's now officially a cheese. Okay, here we go. Bit of a tap, tappity tap. Not much going on there. Why is it not coming out? This, this is not good. Not good. Come on, remove the... There, yes, it's in there. Get it out. Bang on the sink. Let's bang it on the mat, which is sanitised better. And quick as a flash, it's still stuck. Okay, time to pull your sleeves up, Gav. There we go. Right, give it a good vigorous shake. And... Plonk. Finally, it came out of the basket. That is one good-looking cheese. 
Best looking cheese I've seen in ages. It's visually appealing. That's what I'm trying to say. So we're going to air dry it at room temperature or 21 Celsius, 70 Fahrenheit until it's touch dry. Mine took between one to two days and you don't forget to turn it twice daily for even drying. Now you can see there, there's some little cracks. It's too dry. So let me explain. So let me just jump in. You'll notice that during the air drying, the cheese is starting to crack and little micro fissures along where the curds have been pressed together. Just make sure that when you do air dry it, don't air dry it too long because these little cracks will appear. However, if you are vac packing the cheese like I have here, there's no issues because that will close back up again due to the vacuum created by the machine when it seals the cheese. If you are waxing the cheese, which you can do, uh, don't forget to only air dry it until it's just touch dry. Okay, it'll only be about a day because the alcohol in the port tends to help the moisture in the cheese to evaporate faster. Anyway, let's carry on with the video. So the final weight was one kilogram or 2.2 pounds. So I'm just sealing the bag there. So I double seal the bag now on each uh, end. So just checking the size of the cheese, making sure I don't waste any plastic. There we go. Correct size, pop it in there. Now you can wax it as well. I'm just vacuum packing it because it'll close up all of the cracks. I found that to be easier anyway. Nice sound. <laughs> There we go, all sealed and it's sealing now. As I mentioned, I double seal it. There's the second seal. Just stops any air getting in. Beautiful looking cheese and that'll seal up all those micro cracks. Don't forget to write on the bag when you made it and when it is mature, ready to eat. How many months so ripen it at 13 degrees celsius or 55 fahrenheit for three months so back to gav so there you go curd nerds that is red windsor and how to make it it's a delightfully simple little cheese i love the stir curd cheddar uh, method of cheese making or farmhouse cheddar whatever you want to call it very simple and i think it adapted very well to what red windsor is supposed to look like so this is a, a sam an example shot. This is a picture I got off the internet uh, that shows Red Windsor. It's a lot pinker than what mine will probably end up being. Mine's more of a, a deeper purple maroon color, but I think the effect will be similar. I haven't cut into the cheese yet. It's not mature until 3rd of August, if we can see that there. So 3rd of August is when the taste test will be. Uh, so stay tuned for that. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. However, why don't you go and check out some of my other videos that I've got in my archive on this YouTube channel. There are so many cheese making videos like the ones just here. Go and check them out. They are great. You'll learn a new skill and you'll enjoy the tasting the cheese as well. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.